Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory. Welcome back to another episode of The Cinema Rag. I hope you are doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about Alec Baldwin. You might have heard that recently he was charged with manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter for the shooting that happened on the set of the Western Rust. And apparently there was enough evidence to suggest that uh, there should be charges pressed against him. Now, I find Baldwin to be a fascinating character. I mentioned in a previous episode, I find him to be a narcissistic blowhard, and it's not <laughs> its not dissimilar from Trump, who, of course, he's played on Saturday Night Live, who I also find to be a narcissistic blowhard, even though I am, I would identify as a conservative, doesn't necessarily mean that I support Trump. I look at the ideology of a, of a philosophy instead of the people that say they represent it. Either way, Alec Baldwin is not liked by a lot of people in Hollywood, and I would certainly say outside of Hollywood, especially in the flyover country, which ultra-liberals like Baldwin have utter disdain for. They couldn't care about middle America. That's why they call it flyover country, because all they care about is going from New York to L.A. But the fact that he got press with charges, I think there's a large amount of people that were happy, and I think there's a large amount of people who want him to get his comeuppance. Now, why is that? Like, why, why is there this visceral dislike of Baldwin compared to like Cruz or Pitt or Gosling or maybe even actors from his generation like Denzel and so forth? I think there's a couple of things. First of all, let's look at Baldwin's. Just, I mean, peak Baldwin, late 80s, early 90s. I remember first seeing him on She's Having a Baby, the John Hughes movie, which was a Kevin Bacon, Elizabeth McGovern vehicle. It was a decent movie, but I remember that's the first time I saw him. But I mean, did, was he like throwing a 100 mile per hour heat the first four or five years of his life? You think of Beetlejuice, he's very mild mannered there, but married to the mob. You see him in Hunt for Red October, he's amazing there. Miami Blues, he's great in that. He tried the rom-com with Prelude to a Kiss. That kind of stick. And then, of course, his iconic iconic Glengarry Glenn Ross role. And then Malice, where he's that really corrupt doctor. You, you, you look at his early career, and it's just, he was an amazing actor. He was an amazing actor. And then when this century came about, he, he just couldn't get roles as prestigious he probably was last really good in roles like in the cooler he got an academy award for that i remember that that's the william h macy movie about gambling he was in pearl harbor he plays uh do little he's got a good role in there and then you just kind of see the last 20 years he did pivot to do like boss baby and of course he was doing a lot of television he did a lot of television with 30 Rock, and he was very good there. And he's always been iconic on Saturday Night Live. Go to the episode we did on, on Saturday Night Live. He's always been iconic there. And look, the, the guy works. Nobody can doubt that he works. If you look at his filmography, he is always working. He'll find roles. But I think peak Baldwin, of course, when he was younger. Now, Baldwin has several siblings. I remember I was in high school when he was peak Baldwin. And we knew, we knew about Stephen Baldwin, the younger brother. And he was in a couple of movies. His daughter is married to Justin Bieber, Haley Bieber. And then you look at, as well, there was Billy Baldwin, who was in Backdraft. And I think... He comes from a, a very kind of turbulent background. I think he was, you know, a large Catholic family from, from, I think he's from Long Island originally. I remember his original marriage to, his first marriage to Kim Basinger, who was a beautiful woman at the time. She was a Bond girl, was really contentious, and they did not have a good divorce. 
later on and really throughout his whole life he's always had a temper he's always gotten altercations with uh, the paparazzi justified or unjustified he's had alter altercations on on a plane when he was told to get off his phone and he didn't he's had altercations with his ex-wife Kim Basinger he was most famous for about ooh, 15 years ago with his daughter with Kim Basinger Ireland he was on record of, of on the phone conversation I mean she must have been like 11 or 12 at the time and it got leaked and she was just calling he was calling her just a bunch of horrific names the man has a temper and I remember when Bush got elected he he's always had his politics very on his sleeve and when Bush got elected, the second Bush, baby Bush, he was like, oh, I'm going to leave the country. Bush gets elected. And of course, he didn't leave the country. Baldwin is probably the most roasted guy in one of my favorite comedies, Team of Miracle World Police. If you guys have seen that, the, the South Park creators did that movie. And he's the leader of the Film Actors Guild. You can see the acronym for that. If you, that it's an iconic movie. If you haven't seen it, you see it. But he and Sarandon and Matt Damon and Samuel Jackson, you know, all these guys are known and reputed to be leftists. They really put their politics on their sleeves. And Baldwin has been very open about being a big liberal. He has a podcast that he's had for a long time. I used to listen to it on occasion when he interviews other celebrities because I like celebrities talking with other celebrities. And it's called Here's the Thing. It's an NPR show, I think, or it's from New York Public Radio. And this is why I think Baldwin doesn't get a lot of sympathy, because I think he's alienated two big base groups. So aside from his temper and aside from his his kind of just like he is a narcissist, like in any role he does, even if it's on 30 Rock or anywhere, you can kind of see that he's full of himself. Like if you look at someone like Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds could maybe be very full of himself, but he doesn't come off that way. He comes off as kind of like witty, self-effacing, kind of a smart alecky guy, but Baldwin comes off like a narcissistic blowhard. So he alienated two major bases. So he alienates the conservatives by, of course, portraying Donald Trump on SNL. And you could say that he played that role down the middle, kind of making fun of himself. But look, we know SNL is a big liberal bastion. It's been since the 70s. We have that episode on how to fix SNL. And so he alienates the right by being a leftist and by, by roasting and portraying Trump during the Trump years. Okay, so the right don't like him. The flyover country don't like him for that. Let's take a quick break. I wanted to let you know about the other feeds that we have here at the Eclectico Gregorio channel. We have the Awakened Man, which has been around since the spring of 2017, which mostly focuses on having men and women reach their full potential by knowing about toxins in the food, big pharma cover-ups, and ways to biohack your life. We also have the Female Holistic Health Apothecary, which is a channel that originally started as an essential oils channel. And there's about 65 essential oils that are broken down over there. And then more recently, about two years ago, I just pivoted and made it more about female holistic health and naturopathic health because I'm a big proponent of let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And lastly, we have the Confessions of an Obese Child feed which I started in January 2017, which chronicles what it's like to be an overweight child. I was an overweight child and I lost over 100 pounds and kept it off for 30 plus years. So it's a channel, like if you have disordered eating or had a dysfunctional childhood, how to deal with that, how to, how to function with that, and also discusses and I interview various people that have a similar background of dysfunctional childhood, binge eating, binge drinking, and how to deal with that. And there's a lot of great interviews over there. So those are the three other feeds at the Eclectico Gregorio channel. Now let's get back to the show. Then he alienates the left in a way that I think is a little more subtle. So he marries this American, Hilaria Baldwin, who her whole life said she was a yoga instructor from Spain. And they got married and about 10, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, and he's just been knocking babies 
through her. I think they have eight now, right? They've had eight kids, and and he's been you know, uncontrived about having a bunch of kids. And look, it's his his life, his choice. He and Hilary want to have children. That's on them. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not going to tell a man and a woman how many kids they they should have. I'm just not going to tell them that. But there is a certain segment of the population, and I think it's probably more found in the left and in the irreligious that find that to be on some level offensive because they might have the mindset of population, the world's overpopulated or running out of resources or they connect to the global warming, whatever it is, and how it's irresponsible to have so many children. So it's okay if you alienate the right because all of Hollywood is on the left aside from Mel Gibson, who's largely irrelevant, and maybe Chris Pratt, who has been alienated by the Marvel world. It's okay if you alienate the right because, I mean, come on. But you don't alienate the left. So he having a lot of kids with Baldwin, I think, has alienated some of the left. Not all of the left, but I think a certain segment of the left, in particular women. Also, the fact that Baldwin, Hilaria Baldwin, stays fit after all these kids, I think do not underestimate that alienating a, a good segment of women. I remember there was that meme that came out like six years ago and it was a woman very fit who was holding two, three kids and she said, what's your excuse? And that meme was was went viral. And then you, because you, you have two segments, you have the overweight women who are like, you're shaming us for not being in shape. And then you have the the fit women who've had kids. And they're like, well, I mean, it's true. Like our ancestors were all fit when they had kids. They didn't get fat. And we are the most overweight we've ever been in human history, if you look at the statistics. But I think there's a certain segment of the population that doesn't like Baldwin because he's having all these kids and also because Hilaria Baldwin is still in shape after seven kids. So then you have that. Then Hilaria Baldwin is revealed to be a fraud people that she went to school with in massachusetts like this girl didn't, this woman didn't grow up in spain i went to school with her so then that's all outed and then he doesn't apologize neither of them apologize and they come up with this concoction that oh well you know hilaria's grandparents live in spain now and that's how she's spanish it's just it's complete nonsense just denial and lies and i think that goes to where we're at now. So on the set of Rust, and this kind of tells you where his career is, if he's doing a very small Western, you know, he's just, he's got kids to pay for, obviously, and a lifestyle to which he's become accustomed. So he's, he, he, if you look at his filmography, TVography, there's a lot of stuff there because he's got, you know, he's got a lot of kids to feed and I think he just likes to work as well. So when when the shooting happened, he had originally said that the gun accidentally went off. He was holding the gun, and the gun went off. And then he sued the, the ammunitions person on the set and some other people, saying it was their fault. Then the family of the woman that he killed countersued him. So then recently, when it came out that there were being charges pressed against him, the the charges are essentially look a gun cannot magically go off unless somebody pulls the trigger and allegedly baldwin pulled the trigger but see again he wasn't honest about that this could be his legal team his pr team whatever it is you know it was, oh the, 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 the gun magically went off and i think this goes to a history of baldwin as just being an insincere disingenuous blowhard hothead liar unethical piece of crap Look, I, I can appreciate his talent. He's great, especially in his early movies. But I can separate the work from the person. Sometimes you see that in sports, like with Pete Rose, right? Pete Rose is a great player, but he's never going to be in the Hall of Fame because he gambled. I can separate the two. I don't care if he was a gambler. I think that sucks. You can look at a lot of the greatest people in human history. We're probably not the best people, but you look at their work and their contribution to society and not judge them by necessarily their their peccadillos because we all have peccadillos. Why notice the sty in your, your neighbor's eye when you can't see the log in your own, as Christ says? So, look, Baldwin's talented. He had a great imperial run as you call in the late 80s early 90s but i i just think that a lot of america is probably happy 
that these charges were pressed against him because I think he also represents kind of the Upper West Side, Upper East Side, New York, Noah Baumbach, Greta Gerwig world of just this elitism that you saw in the old Whit Stillman movies about 20, 25 years ago. And you still see today this just this super limousine liberal, intellectual, lefty world kind of like that old New Yorker magazine that showed like the United States and it was essentially Manhattan. And then in the distance, you saw little parts of the U.S. And that's kind of the mindset of the intellectuals, the kind of the, the, the literati, cognoscenti type. And I think Baldwin represents that. He kind of has this utter disdain for much of the U.S. and certainly the conservative base, even though he grew up working class in Massapequa. <laughs> and if you remember the Friends episode where he's dating Phoebe, they go to Massapequa and he just likes to say the word Massapequa. But either way, I think most people are okay and totally fine with Baldwin having these charges pressed against him. And everybody brings their own baggage, right? I, as a conservative, I don't like Baldwin because he's a liberal. But it's not just that. Look, there's a lot of liberals in Hollywood. Larry David's a liberal, but I don't hate Larry David. I don't dislike Larry David. But I think it's just the way Baldwin has carried himself the last 30 years. And I just think the pretentiousness and the arrogance and what he represents, I think, is what ires myself and a lot of middle America. And look, I'm not saying that I want him to go to jail. I think charges. chances are that these charges are going to be dismissed or he's just going to get a slap on the wrist or anything like that. And he'll be a, a, on the blacklist for a little while in Hollywood because Hollywood won't want to touch him. But overall, he's going to come back you know, five, ten years from now, whatever. Not even maybe two years from now. And he'll, he'll still have a career uh, simply because that Hollywood are all lefties and they all support each other. And if anybody, Lorne Michaels is going to give him some role somewhere because Lorne Michaels is very close with him. So I'm not really worried about Alec Baldwin's career. I think justice needs to be done. I mean, this is why we believe justice is blind and I believe justice should be done. So whatever the due process happens here in this case, whether or not he is he is found to be uh, charged and convicted of involuntary, involuntary manslaughter, or if he's exonerated, either way, we, we want the truth to come out. And hopefully he will show a level of humility because that is the one thing that Baldwin never shows is humility. There were a couple, a couple weeks ago where he was on Instagram pushing people to get Hilaria Baldwin's Instagram to, I think, a billion followers, or I think it was a million or a billion. And he was even getting like their eight-year-old on these Instagram videos. Please, please follow to, to my mom. And I'm just like, he did four videos on this. And it's just, it's just, he lives in this, this, this cloud, this intellectual lefty world that he's completely detached from the common man. But Baldwin has never expressed or ever had humility. And America is a kind of a country of, we forgive people when they're contrite. And Baldwin is not one of those guys. So let's see what happens. I think he's just going to do a lot of deflection and a lot of gaslighting throughout this case. And whatever happens, we'll see. But I think as a whole, Alec Baldwin is not liked by a lot of people, certainly by the common man. And he's not liked by a lot of people for the aforementioned reasons. Either way, I'll post a poll over at the, the Facebook group and you can let me know what you think of Alec Baldwin. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Thanks for listening to the Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.